A few years ago, we shared the story of a young woman who was only known as Jane Doe at the time, who had been sexually assaulted by Brock Turner. This was a Stanford University student who was caught by witnesses assaulting this young lady near a dumpster. Now, Brock Turner did get prosecuted, but as we all know, the consequences of what he had done were not the 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 crime and, and the consequences did not match. Uh, what he did was horrible. And now Chanel Miller has decided, I'm gonna tell my story. I'm gonna reveal who I am. She's coming out with a memoir. And uh, the memoir's name is Know My Name. Over the weekend, she gave an interview to 60 Minutes. And I wanna share uh, some portions of what she said with you because it's incredibly powerful. Uh, she says, here are these young, talented women excited for their futures who have so many things to give an offer. And something like this happens and they go home and they carry the shame and they swallow it, swallow it up and it eats them from the inside out. She also says, and they think everything would be better off if I was just holed up in my room, maybe things would be better if I didn't speak at all. It's so sick that we let this happen and that uh, that we let them digest these negative ideas of themselves and let them be isolated. So she's in essence describing how she felt as this case went on. She also talks about the details of the uh, prosecution, including how the defense attorneys went after her, uh, tried to do character assassination, which is very typical of these types of uh, cases. And Brock Turner famously didn't even get sentenced to a year in prison. Uh, his sentence was shortened um, uh, based on good behavior. And the judge in that case famously said that, well, spending too much time in prison could have a negative impact on him. So the part that really got to me uh, among all these hideous things is she said that uh, she wanted to write children's books. Uh, one of the reasons she was afraid of coming out with her real identity was she said, well, our parents are going to be worried about buying um, a children's book from someone who was raped behind a dumpster and found half naked and unconscious. Um, so the victim has to be worried about what happens, not just to them at that night, not just the trauma of it for the rest of their lives, but whether the rest of society will judge them instead of the perpetrator for the rest of their lives when they didn't do anything wrong. So that's the reality of rape in America and across the world, and so it, it takes some degree of courage or a lot of courage for Chanel Miller to come forward. But it's important that people do so that others are encouraged so that we can actually fight back and get justice for victims. This logic of if you're not perfect, then you deserve anything that comes to you is beyond evil, right? Mm -hmm. And the fact that she should feel ashamed that she had maybe been drinking. How many of us have been in a situation where we weren't perfect and if things had gone a different way, something could have happened. It's, it's out of control how we put so much blame on the victim and make women feel like they should be ashamed of things right. that people have done to them. And, and, and it's gotta stop. There's a, there's this, a new series on Netflix uh, titled Unbelievable. And it's based on a true story of a serial, serial rapist, and it starts with an 18 year old girl, a woman who had been raped, right? And it destroyed her life because it wasn't, as you mentioned, Jake, it wasn't just the rape itself. It's everything that transpired after. It's the way that she was treated by prosecutors during the questioning. It was how people didn't believe her. It was how her own friends and family abandoned her and just brushed her off as a liar. And luckily, two years later, there were prosecutors in a different, or I should say investigators in a different state who wanted to catch the serial rapist so badly that they finally did, they identified him and they found evidence connecting him to the rape of the 18 year old. And so I bring that up because look, a lot of young women, a lot of women in general don't feel comfortable coming forward because oftentimes the prosecution or the trial of the alleged rapist is, just as bad as the rape itself because they make you relive it over and over again. They do the character assassination. They make you out, they nitpick every little behavior that led up to it and they place the blame on the woman. It's like when unarmed black men get shot. Then they're prosecuted in the court of public opinion. He wants to smoke marijuana, he wants to have detention, etc., etc. And so I was watching a Larry Nasser documentary that he's the guy who molested all those gymnasts. And one of the stories, I mean, you couldn't help but cry. I mean, 
I can't imagine anybody watching that and not crying. I mean, all the stories are, are horrible, but she said uh, that particular victim, her dad didn't believe her. Uh, and and so for years, she he kept asking her to apologize to Nasser because he was a family friend. And then when he found out that it was true, he committed suicide, the dad did. Uh, and you can't ever get that back, okay? And so uh, what we do in looking at it from a certain perspective in this country for historically has been devastating to women throughout. And look, I could, I, I know it's uncomfortable, but I think I could prove it relatively easy. She had a great quote, Chanel said, rape is not a punishment for getting drunk. Mm -hmm. And now you would know that that's true if you just thought about it, what if the shoe was on the other foot, right? So what if you had gotten passed out drunk at a college party? And I know I've been incredibly drunk at college parties and and a guy raped you. Would anyone say, well, the guy was drunk. So obviously another guy raping him behind a dumpster when he's completely unconscious was the fault of the guy who got drunk. No one would say that, no right winger would say it, nobody independent, no one would ever say, well, a guy got drunk, so obviously another guy raped him and that's fine. He probably had it coming, he shouldn't have drank that much. So why is it okay when it happens to a woman? And look, I know that they're technically not saying it's okay, but when you give someone a six month sentence yeah. and they're out in three months, that's exactly what you're saying. You're saying it's okay. Just in response to that sentence, right? Now the judge looked at that suspect who's now a convicted felon and he is on the sex offender registry and thought, no, no, this guy looks like he's a good guy. Like he made a mistake, we're not gonna give him a lengthy prison sentence. And that really goes back to, there's so many different themes. So there's the theme of, of how sexual assault and rape victims are treated by our justice system and by society. And the other theme is something that we go back to often, which is this two-tier justice system. And that two-tier justice system isn't just about money. It isn't just about having the resources to hire the best attorneys to defend yourself. It's also about how people perceive you, right? And the type of privilege you have just based on the way you look. And in the case of Brock Turner, he had that privilege. And so Chanel Miller writes about that as well. And she says, privilege is not having to reckon with his own actions to examine his effects on someone who is not him. I think what bothers me the most is that there's never the suggestion that the victim was also busy having a life before this happened. We have our own agendas and goals and don't appreciate being completely thrown off the rails when this happens. And when people say, why didn't she report? It's like casually asking, why didn't she stop everything she was doing to attend to something that she never wanted to attend to, to in the first place? And I thought that was an interesting way of putting it. And also, who? Look, I, I think that it's incredibly important to, to report it, right? Because that's how you get justice. But given how women are treated, I don't blame them for not wanting to come forward. And look, this is a perspective issue. So there's three layers to it, if he was black instead of white, Everybody knows that the judge wouldn't have thought, well, he was a good kid otherwise. I mean, this seems like a blip on the radar, right? I know the right wing will not acknowledge that every other rational person in the country knows that that's the reality. But he, get beyond that. If he was poor instead of a Stanford student, goner. It doesn't matter what race, goner, okay? The judge wouldn't have been like, well, he seems like an upstanding child. Yeah, he's poor. So of course, he was raping that poor Stanford student. So that's two tier justice system based on class. I think even the right wing would admit that. And then lastly is the is her gender. Because there's no way the judge says, oh, if, if he raped an unconscious male student behind a dumpster, oh, it was an innocent mistake. You know, that uh, we don't want to ruin his good life over just raping a guy behind a dumpster. It would never happen. And you know it, everybody in the country knows it. So we've got to shake ourselves out of the old ways of thinking, which are often disastrous. But I'll give you the hopeful note. Chanel also said uh, about people who came forward after she uh, did her statement in court about what had happened to her uh, and the wonderful things they said. And she said, it was really like medicine. Reading these was like feeling the shame dissolve, you know, bringing all the light in. So I know there's a lot of terrible things on the internet and a lot of terrible comments, but your positive comments actually do help people. So understand you can be part of fixing this and bringing justice to this country 
And you could also be part of the light that she feels and other people feel when you actually bring positivity in the world. And yes, that's even possible online. Well, right. and also working to call out injustice together. You know, I mean, being able to unite through social media, through the internet, to see when injustice is happening and recognize patterns and change systems. That's what yeah. we have to be doing right now. On the go? Don't worry, we got you covered. You can still listen to TYT at our new podcast network. Find us on Apple Podcasts, the Google Play Store, or at tyt.com slash podcast.